Nicole Mary Kidman, AC, born the 20th of June 1967, is an Australian actress and film producer. Kidman's breakthrough roles were in the 1989 feature film thriller Dead Calm and television thriller miniseries Bangkok Hilton. Appearing in several films in the early 1990s, she came to worldwide recognition for her performances in the stock car racing film Days of Thunder, 1990, the romance drama Far and Away, 1992, and the superhero film Batman Forever, 1995. Other successful films followed in the late 1990s. Her performance in the musical Moulin Rouge, 2001, earned her a second Golden Globe Award for Best Actress, Motion Picture Comedy or Musical and her first nomination for the Academy Award for Best Actress. Her performances in the drama Birth, 2004, and the thriller The Paperboy, 2012, earned her Golden Globe nominations for Best Actress and Supporting Actress respectively. Her performance in the 2010 drama Rabbit Hole, 2010, which she also produced, earned Kidman further accolades, including including a third nomination for the Academy Award for Best Actress. In 2012, she earned her first Primetime Emmy Award nomination for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Miniseries or a Movie for her role in the biopic Hemingway and Gellhorn. 2012, Kidman's performance in Lion, 2016, earned her a fourth Academy Award nomination, her first for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Kidman has also received praise for her performance on the HBO miniseries Big Little Lies, 2017. Kidman has been a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF since 1994 and for UNIFEM since 2006. In 2006, Kidman was made a companion in the Order of Australia, and was the highest paid actress in the motion picture industry for that year. As a result of being born to Australian parents in Hawaii, Kidman has dual citizenship in Australia and the United States. Kidman founded and owns the production company Blossom Films. Equals equals early life equals equals. Kidman was born the 20th of June 1967 in Honolulu, Hawaii, while her Australian parents were temporarily in the United States on educational visas. Her father was Anthony Kidman, 1938-2014, a biochemist, clinical psychologist and author, who died of a heart attack in Singapore aged 75. Her mother, Janelle Ann, nay Glennie, is a nursing instructor who edited her husband's books and was a member of the women's electoral lobby. Kidman's ancestry includes Irish, Scottish, and English heritage. Being born in Hawaii, she was given the Hawaiian name Hokulani. The inspiration for the name came from a baby elephant born around the same time at the Honolulu Zoo but the name is also a commonly used Hawaiian name for girls, Hokulani meaning, heavenly star. At the time of Kidman's birth, her father was a graduate student at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. He became a visiting fellow at the National Institute of Mental Health of the United States. Opposed to the war in Vietnam, Kidman's parents participated in anti-war protests while living in Washington, D.C. The family returned to Australia when Kidman was four and her mother now lives on Sydney's North Shore. Kidman has a younger sister, Antonia Kidman, a journalist and TV presenter. Kidman attended Lane Cove Public School and North Sydney Girls High School. She was enrolled in ballet at three and showed her natural talent for acting in her primary and high school years. She says that she was first inspired to become an actress upon seeing Margaret Hamilton's performance as the Wicked Witch of the West in The Wizard of Oz. Kidman has revealed that she was timid as a child, saying, I am very shy, really shy. I even had a stutter as a kid, which I slowly got over, but I still regress into that shyness. So I don't like walking into a crowded restaurant by myself, I don't like going to a party by myself. She initially studied at the Phillip Street Theatre in Sydney. At Philip Street, Kidman studied alongside Naomi Watts who had attended the same high school. She also attended the Australian Theatre for Young People. Here she took up drama, mime and performing in her teens, finding acting to be a refuge. Owing to her fair skin and naturally red hair, the Australian son forced the young Kidman to rehearse in halls of the theatre. A regular at the Philip Street Theatre, she received both encouragement and praise to pursue acting full-time. Equals equals career equals 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 1983 to 1994, career beginnings equals 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 equals. In 1983, aged 16, Kidman made her film debut in a remake of the Australian holiday season favourite Bush Christmas. By the end of 1983, she had a supporting role in the television series Five Mile Creek. In 1984, her mother was diagnosed with breast cancer, which caused Kidman to halt her acting to work temporarily while she studied massage so she could help her mother with physical therapy. She began gaining popularity in the mid-1980s after appearing in several film roles, including BMX Bandit, 1983, Watch the Shadows Dance, 1986, 
1987 aka Nightmaster, and the romantic comedy Wind Rider 1986, which earned Kidman attention due to her racy scenes. Also during the decade, she appeared in several Australian productions, including the soap opera A Country Practice and the miniseries Vietnam 1986. She also made guest appearances on Australian television programs and TV movies. In 1988, Kidman appeared in Emerald City, based on the play of the same name. The Australian film earned her an Australian Film Institute for Best Supporting Actress. Kidman next starred with Sam Neill in Deadcom, 1989, as Ray Ingram, playing the wife of a naval officer. The thriller brought Kidman to international recognition. Variety commented, throughout the film, Kidman is excellent. She gives the character of Ray real tenacity and energy. Meanwhile, critic Roger Ebert noted the excellent chemistry between the leads, stating, Kidman and Zane do generate real, palpable hatred in their scenes together. She followed that up with the Australian miniseries Bangkok Hilton. She next moved on to star alongside her then-boyfriend and future husband, Tom Cruise, in the 1990 auto racing film Days of Thunder, as a young doctor who falls in love with a NASCAR driver. It is Kidman's American debut and was among the highest-grossing films of the year. In 1991, she co-starred with former classmate and friend Naomi Watts and Thandi Newton in the Australian independent film Flirting. Kidman and Watts portrayed two high school girls in this coming-of-age story, which won the Australian Film Institute Award for Best Film. That same year, her work in the film Billy Bathgate earned Kidman her first Golden Globe Award nomination, for Best Supporting Actress. The New York Times, in its film review, called her a beauty with, it seems, a sense of humor. The following year, she and Cruz re-teamed for Ron Howard's Irish epic Far and Away, 1992, which was a modest critical and commercial success. In 1993, she starred in the thriller Malice opposite Alec Baldwin and the drama My Life opposite Michael Keaton. 1995 to 2003, worldwide recognition. In 1995, Kidman appeared in her highest grossing live action film, as of 2017 playing Drive, Chase Meridian, the damsel in distress, in the superhero film Batman Forever, opposite Val Kilmer as the film's title character. The same year Kidman appeared in Gus Van Sant's critically acclaimed To Die For, earning praise, including winning her first Golden Globe for her portrayal of murderous newscaster Suzanne Stone Moretto. Kidman next appeared in The Portrait of a Lady, 1996, based on the novel of the same name, alongside Barbara Hershey, John Malkovich, and Mary Louise Parker. The following year, she starred in the action thriller The Peace Peacemaker, 1997, as White House nuclear expert Dr. Julia Kelly, opposite George Clooney. The film grossed $110 million worldwide. In 1998, she co-starred with Sandra Bullock in the poorly received fantasy Practical Magic as a Modern Day Witch. Kidman returned to her work on stage the same year in the David Hare play The Blue Room, which opened in London. In 1999, Kidman reunited with then-husband, Tom Cruise, to portray a married couple in Eyes Wide Shut, the final film of director Stanley Kubrick. The film was subject to censorship controversies due to the explicit nature of its sex scenes. The film received further attention following Kubrick's death shortly before its release. After brief hiatus and a highly publicized divorce from Cruise, Kidman returned to the screen to play a mail-order bride in the British-American drama Birthday Girl. In 2001, Kidman played the cabaret actress and courtesan Satine in Baz Luhrmann's music musical Moulin Rouge, opposite Ewan McGregor. Her performance received positive reviews. Subsequently, Kidman received her second Golden Globe Award, for Best Actress in a Motion Picture Musical or Comedy, as well as many other acting awards and nominations. She also received her first Academy Award nomination, for Best Actress. Also in 2001, she had a starring role in Alejandro Amenabar's Spanish horror film The Others as Grace Stewart, grossing over $210,947,037 worldwide. The film also earned several Goya Awards Award nominations, including a Best Actress nomination for Kidman. She received her second BAFTA and fifth Golden Globe nominations. Kidman was named the world's most beautiful person by People magazine. In 2002, Kidman won critical praise for her portrayal of Virginia Woolf in Stephen Daldry's The Hours, which stars Meryl Streep and Julianne Moore. Kidman wore prosthetics that were applied to her nose making her almost unrecognizable playing the author during her time in 1920s England, and her bouts with deep depression and mental illness while trying to write her novel, Mrs. Dalloway. The film earned positive notices and several nominations, including for an Academy Award for Best Picture. The New York Times wrote that, 
Kidman tunnels like a ferret into the soul of a woman besieged by excruciating bouts of mental illness. As you watch her wrestle with the demon of depression, it is as if its torment has never been shown on the screen before, directing her desperate, furious stare into the void, her eyes not really focusing. Ms. Kidman, in a performance of astounding bravery, evokes the savage inner war waged by a brilliant mind against a system of faulty wiring that transmits a searing, crazy static into her brain. Kidman won numerous critics' awards, including her first BAFTA, third Golden Globe, and the Academy Award for Best Actress. As the first Australian actress to win an Academy Award, Kidman made a teary acceptance speech about the importance of art, even during times of war, saying, why do you come to the Academy Awards when the world is in such turmoil? Because art is important, and because you believe in what you do and you want to honor that, and it is a tradition that needs to be upheld. Following her Oscar win, Kidman appeared in three very different films in 2003. The first, a leading role in Dogville, by Danish director Lars von Trier, was an experimental film set on a bare soundstage. The second was an adaptation of Philip Roth's novel The Human Stain, opposite Anthony Hopkins. Her third film was Anthony Minghella's war drama Cold Mountain. Kidman appeared opposite Jude Law and Renee Zellweger, playing Southerner Ada Monroe, who is in love with Law's character and separated by the Civil War. Time magazine wrote, Kidman takes strength from Ada's plight and grows steadily, literally luminous. Her sculptural pallor gives way to warm radiance in the firelight. The film garnered several award nominations and wins for its actors. Kidman received her sixth Golden Globe nomination at the 61st Golden Globe Awards for Best Actress. Equals 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 2004 to 2009. Continued success equals equals equals. In 2004 she appeared in the film, Birth, which received controversy over a scene in which Kidman shares a bath with her co-star, 10-year-old Cameron Bright. At a press conference at the Venice Film Festival, Kidman addressed the controversy saying, It wasn't that I wanted to make a film where I kiss a 10-year-old boy. I wanted to make a film where you understand love. Kidman earned her seventh Golden Globe nomination, for Best Actress, Motion Picture Drama. That same year she appeared in the black comedy science fiction film The Stepford Wives, a remake of the 1975 film of the same name. Kidman appeared in the lead role as Joanna Eberhardt, a successful producer. The film, directed by Frank Oz, was critically panned and a commercial failure. The following year, Kidman appeared opposite Sean Penn in the Sidney Pollack thriller The Interpreter, playing UN translator Sylvia Broom. Also that year, she starred in Bewitched, based on the 1960s TV sitcom of the same name, opposite Will Ferrell. Both Kidman and Ferrell earned that year's Razzie Award for Worst Screen Couple. Neither film fared well in the United States, with box office sales falling well short of the production costs, but both films performed well internationally. In conjunction with her success in the film industry, Kidman became the face of the Chanel No. 5 perfume brand. She starred in a campaign of television and print ads with Rodrigo Santoro, directed by Moulin Rouge, director Baz Luhrmann, to promote the fragrance during the holiday seasons of 2004, 2005, 2006, and 2008. The three-minute commercial produced for Chanel No. 5 made Kidman the record holder for the most money paid per minute to an actor after she reportedly earned $12 million for the three-minute advert. During this time, Kidman was also listed as the 45th most powerful celebrity on the 2005 Forbes Celebrity 100 list. She made a reported $14.5 million in 2004 2005. On People Magazine's list of 2005's highest paid actresses, Kidman was second behind Julia Roberts, with $16 minus $17 million per film price tag. Nintendo in 2007 announced that Kidman would be the new face of Nintendo's advertising campaign for the Nintendo DS game More Brain Training in its European market. Kidman portrayed photographer Diane Arbus in the biography for 2006, opposite Robert Downey, Jr. Both Kidman and Downey, Jr. received praise for their performances. She also lent her voice to the animated film Happy Feet, 2006, which grossed over $384 million worldwide. In 2007, she starred in the science fiction movie The Invasion directed by Oliver Hirschbiegel, a remake of the 1956 Invasion of the Body Snatchers that proved a critical and commercial failure. She also played opposite Jenna for Jason Lee and Jack Black in Noah Baumbach's comedy drama Margot at the Wedding, which earned Kidman a Satellite Award nomination for Best Actress, Musical or Comedy. She then starred in the fantasy adventure, The Golden Compass, 2007, 
playing the villainous Marissa Coulter. In 2008, she reunited with Moulin Rouge. Director Baz Luhrmann in the Australian period film Australia, set in the remote Northern Territory during the Japanese attack on Darwin during World War II. Kidman played opposite Hugh Jackman as an English woman feeling overwhelmed by the continent. The acting was praised and the movie was a box office success worldwide. Kidman was originally set to star in the post-World War II German drama, The Reader, working with previous collaborators Sidney Pollack and Anthony Minghella, but due to her pregnancy prior to filming she had to back out. The role went to Kate Winslet, who ultimately won the Oscar for Best Actress, which Kidman presented to her during the 81st Academy Awards. Kidman appeared in the 2009 Rob Marshall Musical 9, portraying the Federico Fellini-like character's muse, Claudia Jensen. She was featured alongside fellow Oscar winners Daniel Day-Lewis, Judi Dench, Marion Cotillard, Penelope Cruz and Sophia Loren. Kidman, whose screen time was brief compared to the other actresses, performed the musical number Unusual Way alongside Day-Lewis. The film received several Golden Globe and Academy Award nominations, and earned Kidman a fourth Screen Actors Guild Award nomination, as part of the outstanding cast. Equals 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 2010 to 14, independent films and biopics equals equals equals. In 2010, she starred with Aaron Eckhart in the film adaptation of the Pulitzer Prize winning play Rabbit Hole, for which she vacated her her role in the Woody Allen picture You Will Meet a Tall Dark Stranger. Her work on Rabbit Hole earned her critical acclaim, and received nominations for the Academy Awards, Golden Globe Awards, and Screen Actors Guild Awards. Kidman also produced this film. She lent her voice to a promotional video that Australia used to support its bid to host the 2018 FIFA World Cup. TV Guide reported in 2008 that Kidman will star in The Danish Girl, a film adaptation of the novel of the same name, playing Lily Elb, the world's first post-operative transsexual. Screen Daily reported that shooting would begin in Germany in July 2011. However, the project has been delayed following the exit of the director, Lasse Hallström and Kidman's co-star Rachel Weisz. In 2009, Variety said that she would produce and star in a film adaptation of the Chris Cleave novel Little B, in association with BBC Films. In June 2010, TV Guide announced that Kidman and Clive Owen will star in an HBO film about Ernest Hemingway and his relationship with Mark Martha Gellhorn, entitled Hemingway and Gellhorn, the film, directed by Philip Kaufman, began shooting in March 2011, with an air date scheduled for 2012. She also starred alongside Nicolas Cage in director Joel Schumacher's action thriller Trespass, with the stars playing a married couple taken hostage. On 17 September 2010, Contact Music, Com said Kidman would return to Broadway to portray Alexandra Del Lago in David Cromer's revival of Tennessee Williams' Sweet Bird of Youth, with Scott Rudin producing. On 30 August 2011, Cromer spoke to the New York Times and explained that the production would not meet its original fall 2011 revival date but that it remains an active project. In June 2011, Kidman was cast in Lee Daniels' adaptation of the Pete Dexter novel, The Paperboy. She began filming on the thriller on 1 August 2011, and The Paperboy was released in 2012. In the film, she portrayed death row groupie Charlotte Bless, and performed sex scenes that she claims not to have remembered until seeing the finished film. I was like okay, so that's what I did, she said said, the film competed in the 2012 Cannes Film Festival, and Kidman's performance drew critical acclaim and among nominations for the SAG and the Saturn Award for Best Supporting Actress, gave Kidman her second Golden Globe nomination for Best Supporting Actress and her tenth nomination overall. In 2012, Kidman's audiobook recording of Virginia Woolf's To the Lighthouse was released at Audible.com. Kidman also co-starred in Park Chan-wook's Stoker, 2013, to positive critical response and a Saturn Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress. In April 2013 she was selected as a member of the main competition jury at the 2013 Cannes Film Festival. Opening out of competition at the 2014 Cannes Film Festival, the film received largely negative reviews. Kidman also starred in two films with Colin Firth, the first, the British-Australian historical drama, The Railway Man in which Kidman played officer's wife Patty Lomax received positive critical reviews. The second, the British thriller film Before I Go to Sleep drew positive critical response of Kidman's performance, as Christine Lucas, a car crash survivor with brain damage. Kidman also appeared in the family film Paddington, 2014, as a villain. Equals 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 2015 to present equals equals equals. On the 23rd of January, she starred in the Australian-Irish drama thriller Strangerland, which opened at the 2015 Sundance Film Festival to a rapturous audience response to Kidman's performance. Kidman also co-starred in the Jason Bateman-directed The Family Fang, 
produced by Kidman's production company, Blossom Films, which premiered at the 2015 Toronto International Film Festival. Other projects include the biographical drama Queen of the Desert, with Kidman portraying the lead role of traveler, writer, archaeologist, explorer, cartographer and political officer Gertrude Bell and Genius alongside Colin Firth and Guy Pearce. Kidman played a lead role in the 2015 thriller Secret in Their Eyes, directed by Billy Ray and co-starring Julia Roberts and Shawita Leggio 4. After more than 15 years, Kidman returned to the West End in the UK premiere of Photograph 51 at the Noel Coward Theatre. She starred as British scientist Rosalind Franklin in the production from 5 September to 21 November 2015, directed by Michael Grandage. The play focuses on Franklin's role in the discovery of the structure of DNA. Kidman and the play earned glowing reviews. Her return to the West End has been hailed as success, especially after having won an acting award for her role in Photograph 51. Kidman is set to portray Queen Atlanta, the mother of the title character, in the Warner Brothers film Aquaman. In 2017, Kidman returned to television in the seven-part miniseries adaptation of the Leanne Moriarty bestseller Big Little Lies. The series aired on HBO. She produced the miniseries along with her co-star, Reese Witherspoon, and the show's director, Jean-Marc Vallée. Kidman has garnered critical acclaim for her performance, with Matthew Jacobs of the Huffington Post stating that she delivered a career-defining performance. Anne Hornaday of the Washington Post wrote that Kidman belongs in the pantheon of great actresses. Equals 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 singing equals equals equals. Her collab collaboration with Ewan McGregor on Come What May peaked at No. 27 in the UK Singles Chart. Later she collaborated with Robbie Williams on Something, Stupid, a cover version for Williams' Swing Covers album Swing When You're Winning. The song peaked at No. 8 in the Australian Arianette Singles Chart and at No. 1, for three weeks, in the UK. In 2006, while voicing a role in the animated movie Happy Feet, she provided vocals for Norma Jean's Heart Song, a slightly altered version of Kiss by Prince. Kidman sang in Rob Marshall's movie Musical 9. 2009 equals equals personal life equals 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 relationships and children equals 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 Kidman has been married twice previously to actor Tom Cruise, and currently to country singer Keith Urban. She has an adopted son and daughter with Cruise as well as two biological daughters with Urban. Kidman met Cruise in November 1989, while filming Days of Thunder. They were married on Christmas Eve 1990 in Telluride, Colorado. The couple adopted a daughter, Isabella Jane, born 1992, and a son, Connor Anthony, born 1995. On 5 February 2001, the couple's spokesperson announced their separation. Cruise filed for divorce two days later, and the marriage was dissolved in August of the year, with Cruz citing irreconcilable differences. In her 2007 interview with Marie Claire, Kidman noted the incorrect reporting of the ectopic pregnancy early in her marriage. It was wrongly reported as miscarriage, by everyone who picked up the story, so it's huge news, and it didn't happen. In the June 2006 issue of Lady's Home Journal, she said she still loved Cruz, he was huge, still is, to me, he was just Tom, but to everybody else, he is huge, but he was lovely to me and I loved him. I still love him. In addition, she has expressed shock about their divorce. In 2015, former Church of Scientology executive Mark Rathbun claimed in a documentary film that he was instructed to facilitate Cruz's breakup with Nicole Kidman. Cruz's auditor further claimed Kidman had been wiretapped on Cruz's suggestion. Prior to marrying Cruz, Kidman had been involved in relationships with Australian actor Marcus Graham and Windrider, 1986, co-star Tom Berlinson. In August 2003, rapper Q-Tip claimed to have had an intimate relationship with Kidman earlier that year. She was also said to be involved with Adrian Brody. The film Cold Mountain brought rumors that an affair between Kidman and co-star Jude Law was responsible for the breakup of his marriage. Both denied the allegations, and Kidman won an undisclosed sum from the British tabloids that published the story. She met musician Lenny Kravitz in 2003 and dated him into 2004. Robbie Williams confirmed he had a short romance with Kidman on her yacht in summer 2004. In a 2007 Vanity Fair interview, Kidman revealed that she was secretly engaged to someone prior to her present marriage to New Zealand Australian country singer Keith Urban, whom she met at Good Day LA, an event honoring Australians, in January 2005. They married on 25 June 2006, at Cardinal Charetti Memorial Chapel in the grounds of St. Patrick's Estate, Manly in Sydney. In an interview in 2015, 
Kidman said, we didn't really know each other, we got to know each other during our marriage. They maintain homes in Sydney, Sutton Forest, New South Wales, Australia, Los Angeles, and Nashville, Tennessee, USA. The couple's first daughter was born in 2008, in Nashville. In 2010, Kidman and Urban had their second daughter via surrogacy at Nashville's Centennial Women's Hospital. Equals 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 religious and political views equals equals equals. Kidman is a Roman Catholic. She attended Mary MacKillop Chapel in North Sydney. Following critics criticism of the Golden Compass by Catholic leaders as anti-Catholic, Kidman told Entertainment Weekly that the Catholic Church is part of her essence, and that her religious beliefs would prevent her from taking a role in a film she perceived was anti-Catholic. During her divorce from Tom Cruise, she stated that she did not want their children raised as Scientologists. She has been reluctant to discuss Scientology since her divorce. Kidman has donated to U.S. Democratic Party candidates. In 2014, Kidman said she had been practicing transcendental meditation since her early 20s. Equals 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 wealth, philanthropy and honors equals equals equals. In 2002, Kidman first appeared on the Australian Rich List published annually in the Business Review Weekly with an estimated net worth of $122 million. In the 2011 published list, Kidman's wealth was estimated at $304 million, down from $329 million in 2010. Kidman has raised money for, and drawn attention to, disadvantaged children around the world. In 1994, she was appointed a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF, and in 2004, she was honored as a citizen of the world by the United Nations. Kidman joined the Little T campaign for breast cancer care to design t-shirts or vests to raise money to fight the disease, motivated by her mother's own battle with breast cancer in 1980. However, due to film commitments and her wedding to Urban, it wasn't until 13 April 2007 that she was presented with the honor. It was presented by the Governor-General of Australia, Major General Michael Jeffrey, in a ceremony at Government House, Canberra. Kidman was appointed Goodwill Ambassador of the United Nations Development Fund for Women, UNIFEM, in 2006. In this capacity, Kidman has addressed international audiences at UN events, raised awareness through the media and testified before the United States House of Representatives. Representatives Committee on Foreign Affairs to support the International Violence Against Women Act. Kidman visited Kosovo in 2006 to learn about women's experiences of conflict and UNIFEM support efforts. She is the international spokesperson for UNIFEM Say No, Unite to End Violence Against Women initiative. Kidman and the UNIFEM executive director presented over 5 million signatures collected during the first phase of this to the UN Secretary General on 25 November 2008. In the beginning of 2009, Kidman appeared in a series of postage stamps featuring Australian actors. She, Jeffrey Rush, Russell Crowe, and Kate Blanchett each appear twice in the series, once as themselves and once as their Academy Award-nominated character. Kidman's second stamp showed her as Satine from Moulin Rouge. On 8 January 2010, alongside Nancy Pelosi, Joan Chen and Joe Torre, Kidman attended the ceremony to help Family Violence Prevention Fund break ground on a new international center located in the Presidio of San Francisco. In 2015, Kidman became the brand ambassador for Eddie Had Airways. Kidman supports the Sydney Swans in the Australian Football League, and once served as a club ambassador. Equals equals filmography equals equals. As of May 2016, Kidman's movies have grossed more than $3.7 billion, with 17 movies making more than $100 million. Equals equals discography equals equals. Her discography consists of one spoken word album, one extended play, three singles, three music videos, ten other appearances, a number of unreleased tracks and two tribute songs recorded by various artists. Kidman primarily known in the field of acting, entered the music industry in the 2000s after recording a number of tracks for the soundtrack album to Baz Luhrmann's 2001 motion picture Moulin Rouge, that she starred. Her duet with Ewan McGregor entitled Come What May was released as her debut and the second single of the Ost through Interscope on 24 September 2001. The composition became the eighth highest selling single by an Australian artist for that year, being certified gold by Australian Recording Industry Association, while reaching on the UK single chart at number 27. In addition to, the song received a nomination at the 59th Golden Globe Awards as the best original song and has been listed as the 85th within AFI's 100 Years, 100 Songs by American Film Institute. Something, Stupid, a cover version of Frank and Nancy Sinatra followed soon. The track recorded as her common duet with English singer-songwriter Robbie Williams was issued on 14 December 2001, by Chrysalis as the lead of his fourth studio album Swing When You're Winning. Kidman's second single top the official music charts in Italy, New Zealand, 
Portugal and England, as well as scored top 10 placings all over Europe, including Australia, Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Germany, Netherlands, Norway and Switzerland. Apart from being certified either gold or silver in a number of countries, it was classified as the 11th best-selling single of 2002 in Italy, 30th in the UK, the 59th in Australia, and the 93rd in France, respectively. On 5 April 2002, Kidman released through Interscope her third single, a cover of Randy Crawford's One Day I'll Fly Away. A Tony Phillips' remix of the track was promoted as the pilot single of a follow-up to the original soundtrack of the same name, Moulin Rouge, Volume 2. After that, in 2006, she contributed with her vocal for the Ost Happy Feet on a rendition of Prince, Kiss. While in 2009, she was featured on the Nine soundtrack, Unusual Way. Most recently, her name has been credited on a track called What's the Procedure, issued on 14 March 2013, on the compilation I Know Why They Call It Pop, Volume 2 by Rock Loke Records. Among others, Kidman also narrated an audiobook in 2012. Equals equals awards equals equals. In 2003, Kidman received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 2003, Kidman was given the American Cinematheque Award. She also received recognition from the National Association of Theater Owners at the Showist Convention in 1992 as the female star of Tomorrow and in 2002 for a distinguished decade of achievement in film. Equals equals references equals 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 further reading equals equals. Dickerson, James, 2003. Nicole Kidman, Citadel, ISBN 978-0-8065-2490-0. Thompson, David, 2006. Nicole Kidman, Knopf, ISBN 978-1-4000-4273-9. Tileski, Alexander, 2016. Nicole Kidman, Faden, ISBN 978-0714868035. Equals equals external links equals equals. Nicole Kidman at the Internet Movie Database. Nicole Kidman at the TCM Movie Database. Nicole Kidman at the Internet Broadway Database. Nicole Kidman at DMOZ. Nicole Kidman at Box Office Mojo. Nicole Kidman at Al Movie. Nicole Kidman at People.com. Nicole Kidman's charity work. Works by or about Nicole Kidman in libraries. World Cat Catalog.